What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and my fellow reptilian, my name's Seth, and we are back again. Well, not really back again, but today we're going to be trying Torchlight Frontiers. I was fortunate enough to be able to get invited into the alpha, and we're allowed to actually record it this time, which is awesome, because this game looks great. So, for those that don't know anything about this game, Torchlight started out as being kind of a more cartoonish version of Diablo. As far as I remember, the first one didn't really have online multiplayer, or there was something about it that I didn't get into. And then Torchlight 2 was pretty cool, but didn't end up getting that well received in reviews and stuff. But Torchlight Frontiers seems like it's going to be really, really cool, because first and foremost, when this game does end up coming out, it's going to be completely free to play. And they're actually monitoring a lot of feedback and trying to figure out, okay, what are they going to do? How are they going to monetize this platform without making it entirely pay to win? There's a lot of aspects of it that do sound very pay to win, but that doesn't matter because if the base game's cool enough, uh, right now we only have two classes that we can try uh, try out, which one of them is this cool robot dude, the other's just a generic mage. Uh, and here we've got our little alpaca. I don't know why we have a pet, but we can end up choosing different types of pets as our starting character or our starting pets and well let's just get into it because this is gonna be pretty cool is this guy even talking to me something about head up to this other area head upstairs to enter the outpost all right i can break boxes and stuff the cool thing about this character is any gear that you end up getting will actually transform the way that your robot looks so you can end up getting boots that will make you move faster but it might actually look like tank tracks on this guy so he actually builds up heat think of it as a berserk meter so as we end up uh doing more damage to enemies we're going to end up building up our heat meter and then we're going to end up okay that alpaca scaring me and then we're going to be able to end up like doing a special move i guess uh, of sorts special move out of heat okay i don't have enough heat <laughs> I don't know exactly. I, I am going into this completely blind here, guys. I wanted to get the genuine first-hand experience with you because it seems pretty cool already. Like, I'm I'm always down for these Diablo-type games. I'm a big fan of the Diablo games. It also mentioned uh, in the tutorial, or not the tutorial, but the tutorial text, I should say, that... Um, Certain weapons might end up having slower attack speed, but a wider arc to attack more enemies at a time, as opposed to uh, single target damage. Oh, there we go. That's how we build up our heat, by using our ranged battle. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. This guy's like definitely where it's at. Can I just hold alt as the default to... No, I can't. I want to open my inventory, but all these... They don't let me change anything. So we got the new belt automatically, and this is going to end up... Whoa, that is already... Let me tell you guys, from somebody who has years worth of experience with a game like Diablo, this is already great because this UI, this is, this is one of the most important things with games like this instantly being able to recognize exactly what we're doing because i i don't know anything about this game we're just playing it firsthand and we can already see that that little sword icon in the middle of the screen shows that the sword that we use the rusty sword has four bars of attack speed compared to this club which would end up having left uh, less attack speed but you can see that the dps in total is going to be 4.4 instead of just a solid three so i'm gonna try that out that is absolutely awesome. Like, I really do genuinely think that that is a great interface because there's so many games like this that do such a horrible job of doing something like that. Okay, this will take us to our fort, which apparently our fort is a very pivotal part to play in this game. We're going to slowly end up building up our fort, not only to end up giving us advantages out in the combat, but also to craft vanity items, which is probably going to be one of the biggest aspects of the pay to win or well of the cash shop, I should say, not necessarily just pay to win is uh, just going to end up being all the vanity items that we can end up getting. And this is already very reminiscent of Diablo. Absolutely loving it. Skill station. Uh, press F to go to edit mode uh, and then B to build. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, spend gold and skill points to build a skill station. Okay. Press F and then B. Where's my skills uh, station? Skill stations. Here we go. I guess we're just supposed to build this one. Uh, let's call this home. Okay. This will cost. It doesn't say what it costs. Whatever. So we get to place it. Oh, that's cool. That's actually really cool that we could customize this. Because uh, you could end up having a very, very efficient home base. And I love that idea. That is just, that's fantastic. Uh, build and place an Ottoman shop as well. Okay, where do we actually get that? Is that decoration, crafting? Was it secretly in the, yeah, there it is. Okay. 
So let's build one of these. They're just letting those be absolutely free as well. And let's just plop it down right beside it, even if it kind of ends up going into the wall, whatever. Uh, go to the Imperial Outpost and talk to the General or something. Okay. Uh, here's the Ottoman shop. So what is all this? Oh, this is just changing all of our skill points as well. Okay. So coal launch. Launch coals. Uh, hot coals from your furnace that land and set the ground on fire. I like the sounds of that. Let's just never mind anything else. All they got to do is say that there's fire. Uh, active skills. Passive skills. Completed, uh, I guess, just skill trees or something. And then upgrading different skills as well. Oh my goodness. That is... This is a really, really cool game. I can already tell. Like, even it just being in the alpha and being this refined already, like, is just really, really cool. Uh, so we can press S, go to skill menu, and then we can just quite literally pick and choose where our skills go. Uh, here's our actives. Here's our passive skills. That is, that is very, very well done. Bravo to the devs for actually figuring out, like, such an intuitive system where we can just see all of this right here, right now, and it's not, like, overly complicated or anything, dude. Like, I, I actually really do like that, and this, I guess, is, yeah, shared stash. So, this is what we would end up sharing between our different characters. Uh, there doesn't seem to be an X to close anything, I guess, just because we can press escape. Uh, this game is going to end up coming out on consoles as well, folks, so you can be very excited about that. Your portal, your fort, Imperial Outpost. There we go. And um, I, that that just already is another big point for this game, is the fact that it's going to be on console as well as PC. Now, we'll see whether or not it's going to be cross-platform. I'm not sure about that, but hello. Oh, was that our player? I think that was an iron player that actually just wrote, uh, walked by. Uh, go to the wood's edge and meet blah, 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 the den of upheaval. Uh, is that here, the Woods Edge? Woods Edge, yeah, that's a little bit further. Which, uh, Vegeta, hello. He's invisible for some reason, I guess just because optimization or something. Okay, we're not going to talk to any of these our NPCs. There's a little dragon ally. That looks sick. If I could have picked a dragon, I would have picked a dragon. Uh, I'm guessing all those air NPCs would be things we could talk to, but quite literally, the map just shows us right here, right now. Okay, this is the uh, potion vendor, so this is the character that we're actually talking to. It shows quest NPCs, and the map itself is very cool, and of course, going to end up being random generated when you're going into uh, dungeon zones and stuff like that, so I'm excited. That's, of course, another player right there. Hello! I'm a robot. Please don't kill me. I know that you're scared of me. Public zone. Ah. So that's the thing that I actually really like about this game over a game like Diablo 3 or even just Diablo in general is the fact that this game is more of an MMO Diablo style game rather than just being the usual four player co-op. Maybe it'll only go up to four players in specific areas. I don't know any of that yet. Uh, okay, that's just going for a resource. This definitely seems like an MMO. Yoink! I don't know why I'm gathering rocks, but I'll take it. Take this, little dude! And I love the fact that we don't have to worry about, like, mana or anything on this guy. Even the other character. Uh, even the other character. Bruh! Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Even the other character, the mage character, had a very different mechanic, but very, very cool and unique, where it's like, okay, enemies just respawn in certain areas. That is totally like an MMO. That's way different compared to Diablo. Jeez Louise. Ooh, Gunblade, some other things for my chest. That's really cool stuff. Uh, but the mage had it set up where you would end up using dark magic to build up a meter to use light magic and then vice versa, which seemed really interesting and unique if I was into like a mage character by any means, which I mean, I would be eventually. Whoopsie daisy. That's the wrong attack. So what about this tree over here? Is this going to be anything? Of course, we're just destroying everything. I love that he's got a little saw that comes out of him. Like, if they end up putting the same amount of uh, care into all the characters that they've done with this guy already, let alone, I'm sure that the mage already is unique enough as well, then this could end up being one heck of a game, dude. All right, let me uh, go to my inventory here. What was all this? So we got a stick here that's going to be a little bit faster attack speed. Overall, a little bit better, but it's two-handed, I see. So that's not really much of a trade-off just for a 0.5 difference in damage. Uh, we also ended up getting the insulated hatch, which gives us fire defense. That's actually visually on our character right here. And then we also got, uh, what was it? The insulated gloves, I think. So our arms are actually a little bit different as well, which, like I said, that's the thing that I love so much about this little robo dude. And I think so many people find the appeal of him 
is the fact that you end up like visually changing your mechanical parts and stuff like that, which is just such a unique, neat mechanic for something as simple as changing your armor. You know what I mean? So I would really be curious to see how the mage is going to end up playing out. But this is already like, it feels great, guys, let me tell you. And that's that's always really important. Like, I know I kind of just keep saying that, but really, okay, there's the mage. So we can kind of see him firsthand here. I don't need to actually like do it myself. So let's use our special ability of death. There we go. Burn! And he's got like an owl helping him out. And I'm guessing all the loot, yeah, it's gotta be instanced, meaning that I see my gold, he sees his gold. So we're not actually having to fight for loot or anything like that. That's a pretty cool character though. You can also end up being male or female of any of the classes. Uh, I don't think it makes a difference for the robot. Maybe it would, but I wouldn't think so just because, oh, I see. So we have too much heat. We have to spend our heat while we're actually fighting. So that's kind of that's kind of a unique mechanic. So it's like as we end up building up our heat, we're going to want to spend it as much as possible. So you saw right there too that guy actually had uh, a weird mechanical pick that he was using, which was pretty cool just to end up uh, picking that rock. And then here we go, dull cannon. So that actually changed the cannon inside our character. I can't actually look at it, but that's going to end up being our ranged attack. So that's going to be way better now. That's a lot more powerful. Let's try and go and get this guy's quest done. This is actually, this is really cool, dude. Like, it really feels like another type of Diablo. Okay, so here we've got, uh, I think this is our first, yeah, our first relic weapon. So the way that relic weapons work, apparently these will end up gaining XP from kills, which end up making them more and more powerful as you end up increasing them. When fully charged, they can be used for a brief duration and slowly recharge over time. So it's like... I guess it's just kind of like building up a limit break or something, you know? Den of Upheaval. That is such a reference to Diablo 2's Den of Evil. That is, this, like, that's the thing. I'm, like, overly nostalgic even with a game like this just because of all the def uh, references that I'm seeing to Diablo, despite the fact that it's not Blizzard actually making this one. But good on the devs for doing stuff like that. Like, the Den of Upheaval. That's, that's funny. Oh, man, this area looks beautiful. Okay, so apparently we can just press W to change our weapon at any time. That's what it said anyways, but I'm not seeing... Yeah, here we go. Out of Relic Charge. Okay, I guess I should have read a little bit more, but I'm in a bad habit of just kind of skipping through things. So we have to tidy up the den! Oh, dude, that is totally a reference to Diablo 2. That is awesome. Dude. That takes me back and a lot of just so many different aspects of this one thing that i love about this game first of all we don't get interrupted while we're going for resources by being attacked which is great but one of the biggest things about the diablo types of games is that usually i see that trap can i activate those no i can't uh usually what will end up happening is you'll end up having to reload an area over and over to end up fighting enemies uh, so usually even, you know, Diablo is kind of like a single player game that you can also happen to play online with friends. So if you wanted to revisit an area, you would end up having to reload that area by leaving the game and starting another one or changing your quest, whatever. Um, but in this game, it's straight up like an MMO, which actually looks awesome. Maybe that's not traps on the ceiling. Maybe it's just stuff, part of the background for vanity. But, um, this is like an MMO where there's hunting dens. So we've got like these places where these enemies are continuously spawning, which is really, really cool. So where's our meter for our W weapon? It says that we can use it right now, I think. Uh, I'm not sure where the meter is for it, because I, I, I'm guessing it just is slowly depleting over time or something. But let's try it out on this guy here. Yeah, that's right. You might be like ultra powerful, dude. Oh gosh, he's just like a shaman. So let's just do some proper kiting, man. Here we go. I love it. This is awesome, man. Oh, we're overheated. We're overheated. We got our cooldown on our ability. He's doing some crazy weird abilities. He's also really smart and seems to know like where he can stand uh, to not take damage, which is pretty cool. All right, let's just pop a flask. Why not? I also got to remember, I'm overheating like all the time, dude. Yeah, this guy actually knows where to stand to avoid our spells, which is really annoying. <laughs> like, most times an enemy wouldn't do something like that, dude. 
Oh, there we go. So we actually have a big cooldown on our uh, on our weapon. So I guess what we're supposed to be doing is uh, using our relic weapon kind of just in the middle of uh, in the middle of fights when we're trying to just clear a big wave of enemies or something like that. Yeah, he is straight up a shaman from Diablo 2, dude. Even rezzing the little goblin dudes. Get out of town. No problem. You get out of here too, little guy. Hey, we ended up getting a green. Poisonous cannon. All right, so that's even more damage, and it's going to end up doing poison damage as well, which sounds really, really cool. And then, awesome enough, I love it. It just automatically throws a portal here for us to end up taking to the exit, which is great. What is this passive buff? So Shrine of Fire Defense. We could have been using that the whole time on the boss, dude. You serious? This is so cool, though. Like, man. I'm actually, like, I'm very surprised. It's really appealing graphically. Uh, and also the game itself seems like it's going to end up being very hardcore, despite the fact that they make it all very, look very simple. Which, that's kind of why I keep saying over and over how cool this is. Because to make a game like this that is inherently very, very complicated, to make a game like this seem simple is a big feat unto itself. Okay, so we could end up pressing Z to end up going back to town, but we just grabbed somebody else's weapon. I don't know if that was like a quest line or something, but either way. Uh, so we could just go to our fort or to the outpost, which is really cool that we can just, okay. Uh, find the waypoint in the woods edge. Okay, I'm down for that rather than warping back to town. Any excuse to play this game a little bit longer, right? Uh, waypoints, if I'm not mistaken, it's gonna be the exact same as Diablo probably where the waypoint is going to be like a fast travel point that we'll end up unlocking. Okay, this is getting interesting. All right, let's swap to our special weapon of death, which, oh man, it actually has a unique like uh, death animation on these dudes. We're actually like chopping them in half. That's so brutal, but I love it because I am an automaton and I don't care about the feelings of others. That is awesome, dude. Oh my gosh. Now I wonder how the healing potions end up working. You know, like we're so far, we seem to be har uh, farming them from these enemies, which is pretty cool. But one of the things that Diablo 3 ended up uh, doing away with was relying on healing potions. And instead, what it ended up doing was having it uh, so that you could end up finding healing orbs while you're out in the world and stuff. Here's another player. Here's a waypoint. So waypoints are magic portals, uh, each area and public area and passage. They can trickly travel between other waypoints. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so we can just use this to end up going back to the uh, Imperial place. We got all our quests being tracked right here as well. So our active quest is going to be uh, use your town portal to return to the Imperial outpost. Okay, so we already ended up use the waypoint uh, to return to the Imperial outpost. Okay, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's one or the other, right? I wasn't sure if the game was going to be greedy about it. Like, oh, you got to use one or the other. But that wouldn't make much sense for it to actually be like, use one or the other, you know? Like, it just considering everything else about this game being as refined as it is. Okay, that is a very beautiful sword. Not only does it look absolutely awesome. Can I rotate my character? That's too bad. I wish I could rotate him. We can... Oh, man. I wish I could open his little uh, chest area, too. Like, I want to be able to interact with him a little bit more. Oh, dude. This is another player right here, guys. So, you can see. Look how awesome he looks already. Jeez Louise. Ziga Zow. That is just... That looks great, man. Okay. Uh, you must have met the zombies. They clearly weren't goblins. If you bring some of their clothing, I can confirm their origins pervert okay why do you want zombie clothes well anyways folks you know what i guess uh should we just keep going i think i think maybe we'll kind of do like a mini series of this you think i could i could see that yeah we'll, we'll do a couple episodes okay so this will kind of be like the introductory episode where you get to see the basis of the game and stuff and we'll we'll have a couple episodes while the uh demo is still available or while the alpha is still available i should say everything's gonna be wiped obviously and you gotta be invited into it which i'm very fortunate that i was be able to be invited maybe we'll get to experience some multiplayer a little bit later but as for right now I mean, keep your eyes on this game, guys. Like, when this comes out, this is going to be awesome. Definitely going to be a game that I'll play on the channel because I love these types of games, dude. I love these hardcore RPGs, especially when it's something like this where it just is... It feels so clean and clear and just refined, you know? Especially with it being early alpha, like closed alpha, not even beta. This is pretty insane how tight this is. 
Uh, it's also just because this game's right up my alley. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, folks. Very much appreciate it. If you would please like, sub, favorite, whatever, all that stuff. You guys know all the deal. Hit the notification bell. If you want to go the extra mile of supporting me, however, there are links in the description to end up doing so by buying merch or checking out the link to Gawkbox, which is where you can donate for free. Um, and then otherwise, Torchlight Frontiers. That's the name of the game. It's going to be free to play when it comes out. Who knows when it's going to come out? Hopefully sometime later this year. Have yourselves a great day. Sign Aura, stay epic, and I'll see you in the next one.